So I have a question for you. How many of you out there grew up watching a TV show featuring a robot? Here in Japan, the answer might be, yeah, I grew up watching Doraemon, or I grew up watching Astro Boy. Uh, back in the States, I grew up watching a TV show called The Jetsons, and many of you probably know it. It featured a robot named Rosie, and she was really cool because she didn't only just make you know, cakes and clean the house. She also made really good sarcastic jokes about the boss um, and even played football with the family's son, Elroy. Now, ever since coming to Japan about three years ago, I have been searching for a robot like Rosie. And I've seen a lot of robots during that time. Robots that swim, robots that climb, robots that play piano, robots that run marathons, robots that make okonomiyaki, ramen, cotton candy, robots that recite Shakespeare, different colored bear robots, robots that look like humans, robots that look like robots but aren't actually robots, and plenty of robots that dance. Okay, so at TEDx Kyoto, I would like to talk about what I think is the biggest barrier to getting these really cool robots out of the showroom and into our lives. And I think the key word here is trust. Let me give you an example. A friend of mine is working on some really cool tech called autonomous wheelchairs. Now these are robot wheelchairs that automatically navigate the world, avoid obstacles, and are useful for those people that cannot physically control their wheelchairs by themselves. Thanks to these very expensive but accurate sensors called laser rangefinders, the tech itself is extremely reliable. Now, my friend, last time I met her, she told me that she was really frustrated, though. She said, you know what, Angelica, this, this kind of tech is life-changing. It can make people independent, give them back their mobility. The problem is, they're just too afraid to use it. Fear. It's a problem. And I'm not just talking about fear of new technology. Robots are different from our computers. They're different from our mobile devices because robots can act on our world. And it's the reason why we might feel a little bit apprehensive about handing a robot a knife. Well, to cut up our vegetables, of course. So how can we overcome these irrational fears? How can we build trust where saying it's 100% reliable doesn't convince the person that's being freaked out by the robot? Well, imagine, what if that robot could be pleasant, likable, and positive? What if that robot could sense your anxiety and apologize and, and then slow down? Sorry, I really didn't mean to freak you out. What if you were already familiar with that robot and you trusted them and you liked them because you just played around a tennis with them last week? This is something that Rosie, Doraima, and Astro Boy all had in common, and it's something that I like to call robot likability. Uh, and this is actually a thing. Um, researchers call it human robot symbiosis, and what I'd like to argue is that it's not just a thing that's nice to have, but robot likability is absolutely essential for getting robots into our homes, into our lives, and being accepted as helpers in our society. I'd love to tell you more about my research at Kyoto University in robot emotions and music playing robots, and some simple ways to increase that human robot symbiosis. And finally, I'd love to show you a demo of our own music playing robot live on stage at TEDx Kyoto. Thanks for your consideration and hope to see you in July.